108 billion pounds of food are wasted every year in the U.S. Yet 38 million Americans don't have enough to eat every day. How do we get the surplus food to people who need it the most? My father, Joe O'Connor, grew up in a large family during the Great Depression. Food was scarce during that time, and he learned to never waste it. As the father of six kids, he couldn't stand it if any of us tried to throw our food away. And I was that kid that would be throwing my peas and carrots under the table to the dog. <laughs> my father really didn't like to see food being wasted, but it was even harder for him to see people going hungry. So in his later years, he volunteered at a food pantry where he saw the need firsthand. He noticed that a restaurant in the area had leftover bread at the end of the night, and he asked if he could bring that back to the food pantry, and they said yes. Later on, he realized that the grocery stores in his neighborhood were throwing away perfectly edible food. So he approached them and soon found himself picking up food seven days a week. He was in a little over his head at this point. So he recruited some of his older friends from church and even his grandchildren to help. My dad was adamant on his pickup mornings to not make any other plants because he knew that the people were counting on him, both at the grocery store and at the food pantry. So he would drop off the food, stop, get a cup of coffee to go, black, no sugar, and head home to his favorite chair to read the newspaper. He did this for years and years until he died at 81 years of age. My father was one example of someone who saw food being wasted and brought that to people in need. I am so incredibly grateful that I get to continue my father's legacy on a larger scale and my job at Feeding San Diego. It's a hunger relief organization that's part of the Feeding America Network. Today, we rescue more than two million pounds every month including from the very same grocery stores that my father rescued from all those years ago. So knowing what I do now and what my dad did then, is there a solution to get surplus food to people who need it? The answer is yes. Food rescue is one of the greatest solutions to help end hunger. Food rescue is the act of not letting edible food go to a landfill and instead redistributing it to people in need. You may be surprised to find that the food that is rescued is the same food that you buy at the grocery store. We as a society are accustomed to abundance, a huge selection of choices and larger and larger portion sizes. So it is no wonder that food waste has become a massive humanitarian problem around the world. We're wasting 35% of our food every year in the US, 35%. So why does hunger still exist? Food is a basic human right. And we as human beings are responsible for caring for one another. It takes just one event for us to worry about where our next meal may come from. Whether the car breaks down, we lose a job, medical bills pile up, or we face unexpected childcare costs as what happened to so many families when schools closed during COVID. It takes one event for us to have to make tough choices. Do I get the car fixed or do I buy meat for the week? 
Do I pay the electric bill or buy groceries? I recently met a mom named Maggie who said she frequently skips dinner so that her kids have enough to eat. An elderly man named Alan told me that he can't afford both medications and food, so he stopped taking his meds. No one should have to choose between food and basic necessities. COVID showed us this can happen to anyone. But it doesn't have to be this way. We all have the power to create change. It takes just one person asking a company, what do you do with your leftover food? I'd like to share some success stories with you from the food rescue movement. First, a Starbucks employee noticed that food was being wasted at the end of the night. By speaking up, they were able to influence a billion dollar corporation to rethink food waste. Starbucks established its food share program and now donates all their surplus food to hunger relief organizations who then distribute it to people in need. Today, 50 million pounds of food have been diverted from the landfills thanks to this program. Think about that, 50 million pounds of food rescued from just one corporation. Another example is Beanbow's Bakeries in San Diego, where thousands of loaves of bread are baked every day. Like many companies, they can experience order cancellations from time to time and have to figure out what to do with their leftover product. And this is where food rescue comes in. We send a truck and we pick up the extra loaves and then we distribute it out to the community, to people in need. It's an example of another corporation <clears throat> that has the power to choose what to do with their leftover food and they choose to feed people. Finally, a professor at San Diego State University found out that some of his students were going hungry and he noticed that they couldn't focus in class. So he decided to do something about it. He partnered with us to start rescuing food from stores near the campus, including Target and Ralph's. And now there are six food pantries across the campus where students in need can access food at no cost with no questions asked. These are just a few examples of food rescue in action, but there's a bigger part to this humanitarian crisis that needs to be heard and understood. In April of 2022, the UN issued its climate report, which the UN Secretary General called a code red for humanity. If food waste was a country, it would be the world's third largest producer of greenhouse gases behind the US and China. You see, all the food we throw away, whether it's the leftovers on our plates, or the excess food from a grocery store that didn't get sold ends up in a landfill. And do you know what happens to food in a landfill? It produces methane gas, a super pollutant 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide. For food to break down quickly, it needs oxygen. In landfills, most food is tied up in plastic bags and has a lot of other stuff, a lot of other trash on top of it. So it really doesn't have access to oxygen to break down quickly. In fact, it can take 25 years for a head of lettuce to decompose in a landfill. 25 years. And all that time, that the food is slowly decomposing. It is producing methane gas that goes into the atmosphere that you and I breathe every day. The UN says that one of the best ways to improve our climate is to reduce the amount of methane gas emissions. And we can help do that by not throwing our food away. The good news is states across the country are taking action 
In California, where I live, for example, they recently implemented a new law called SB 1383. It requires that food businesses like grocery stores donate their excess edible food to food rescue organizations. This is a really big deal. Simply put, they are no longer allowed to throw edible food away. 12 states have enacted some sort of food waste legislation. Let's keep that going. Remember, every action counts. If you know somebody that owns a food business, ask them what they do with their leftover food. If you go to a coffee shop or restaurant, don't be afraid to ask about their policies. Write to your elected officials and demand action on food waste. We all have the ability to be a connector, a rescuer, an agent of change. Don't let food go to waste. Businesses have excess food that they need to get rid of, and if they throw it away, it pollutes the environment. And people are still hungry. So let's feed people, not landfills. I'm sure my dad would agree that food rescue is a win-win for everyone. Thank you.